In topics 1 through 4, we spent a considerable amount of time getting the basics and foundations of chemistry, as well as talking about the atom. Now, we're going to take it a step further. Now that we have a basic understanding and general knowledge of the atom, which is the basic building block of everything, we're now going to start to investigate what that looks like when atoms start to bond to create compounds. Topic 5 talks about the two main types of compounds, which are covalent and ionic. In the first part of this topic, we'll take a close look at ionic compounds, and then we'll transition into covalent. We're also going to take a look at acids and how we name and write those formulas. Before we get started, it's probably a good idea to talk about why atoms bond in the first place. Recall from topic 1 that a compound is composed of two or more elements combined in a specific ratio and held together by chemical bonds. These chemical bonds cannot be broken down by physical means. In other words, if we were taking a look at any of these compounds shown below, you couldn't separate the elements based on physical means, such as filtration or evaporation. Instead, it would take a chemical reaction to do that. Now the bonds that hold these atoms together are the bonds that categorize what type of compound we're looking at, whether it might be ionic or covalent. So revisiting topic 3 a little bit as to why atoms bond, recall that atoms on the periodic table have electron configurations, and every element on the periodic table want to be like noble gases. The reason for this is because noble gases have completely filled electron configurations. All of their orbitals are filled with electrons, and therefore that makes them stable. Every other element will either lose, gain, or share electrons in order to achieve the noble gas configuration. In other words, they want to have eight valence electrons, with the exception of helium only having two. So, when we get into bonding, Remember, we're looking at the valence electrons, those outermost electrons that are going to be involved in the bonds that we look at. To get ourselves ready to go to see these bonds, we need to be able to draw what we call Lewis dot symbols or Lewis dot diagrams, which are going to show the number of valence electrons available for bonding. Here are the steps on how to draw a Lewis dot symbol for either an atom or an ion. To be honest, it's a very simple process, and so it's probably better just to look at some examples on how to do it. All right, so let's take a look at example one. In example one, we are asked to draw the Lewis dot diagram for the following. We have two examples of, of neutral atoms, and then we have two examples of ions. So let's take a look at the oxygen atom. The first thing we want to do is we want to write out the element symbol. Oxygen is O. Next, we want to indicate or de determine how many valence electrons oxygen has. Remember, if you look at the Roman numeral group that the element is in, that will tell you how many valence electrons. Since oxygen is in group 6A, that means it has 6 valence electrons. We're going to show these electrons, this time as dots. Essentially what we'll do is imagine that there are four sides to the symbol, top, bottom, left, and right. What we're going to do is we're going to fill those sides with dots that represent the valence electrons. Starting at the top, we're going to draw 1, 2, 3, 4, and now I can go and double up 5 and 6. It's just convention to start at the top. To be honest, if you started on any, any other side, it's fine. So long as you don't double up any side until you've gone around to all four sides. This would be the Lewis dot diagram for oxygen. Let's try another. Let's look at an ion this time, the bromide ion, which is bromine with a negative one charge. So just like before, I'm going to write down the element symbol, Br. Then I'm going to determine how many valence electrons bromine has. It's in group 7A, and so that means it has seven valence electrons. Starting at the top, I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So this would be the Lewis dot diagram for just simple bromine, but I have to take into consideration that it's an ion, specifically with a negative one charge. When it has a negative one charge, does that mean we add an electron or lose an electron? We add an electron, and therefore completing the octet. This hopefully should visually show you why bromine prefers to be a negative one and why it would want to become charged. 
because when it takes on an extra electron, it now has a full eight valence electrons, just like a noble gas, and therefore that makes it stable. Now, when you're looking at something that has a charge, we have to do one extra thing to the Lewis diagram. We have to put the species in brackets and then put the charge on the outside. All right, let's take a look at nitrogen. Nitrogen is the letter N. Nitrogen is in group 5A and therefore has five valence electrons, starting at the top, one, two, three, four, and five. Since nitrogen is neutral, we don't have to do anything with brackets. That would be our Lewis dot symbol. Next is sulfide ion, which is sulfur to a negative two. Sulfur is the symbol S, and sulfur is in group 6A, so it has six valence electrons. One, two, three, four, five, and then six. But it has a negative two charge when it's in ion form. So we have to add two extra electrons in. Once again, this is why sulfur has a negative two charge. It will complete the octet, making it just like a noble gas. We have to put the brackets around and then the charge on the outside. All right, we will go ahead and see you in the next video for section two.